Hello and welcome back to another Reverse 1999 Let's Play. I don't know what to say. On one end, I don't want this series to end because it's kind of like my comfort food, you know? It's just, when I have nothing to do, Reverse 1999 is just the most relaxing thing I can do. But then on the other end, I have been going on for far too long and I've overstayed my welcome. I need to move on to new content. You know, the UTTC market or other stuff in that agenda. You know, more difficult content. So, I want to live stream Reverse 1999 soon, just doing the UTTC market. I know, I know, I only have Inside 2s, but maybe, maybe, with our small group, we can clutch some of these. Maybe some of them will come really close, closer than they should. I know I'm not gonna clear it. I just want the skin. Frankly speaking, if you open the event, you'll see. Zero. I've done nothing. Uh, it's just busy days. I haven't been able to sit consistently with Reverse 1999. So yeah, it's special week. I'm gonna grind you to CC Market. I want to stream. It's just, I don't know what timing. Uh, what timing Everything would be I good does. for you, you know? Just let me know. I will stream so it if you want. Otherwise, on the last day, I will rush the UTC market. I'll probably play the story after this episode. Anyways, without further further ado, let's begin. Contact point. Friendship first, my friend. Is this where we finally see the announcer? Please, please, just l let us know the guy already. Unlike the other days, Constantine isn't by her desk today. The light in the room stays off. She has her back to the door, facing the window. Daylight slowly permeates into the dark room through the rigid marble windows. Hey, hello, Pedra. Come in. I'm here to report the situation so far. Some neutral parties have tilted in favor of the draft. How many? Not a lot of them, but enough to make the votes even. They have always pursued revolution in the Foundation. Looks like Mark has finally persuaded them. I heard Miss Z has been working hard on canvassing too. But the number of the conservatives remains the same. We don't have to worry about that. I believe we will still prevail in the final vote days later. What about the other groups? Still functioning as usual. Nothing special. You know, I, I find it ironic that his name is Committee Member 1. When he literally has a name. He's Pedro. It's same thing with Mark. Why is he called Delegate? He's Mark. You gave him a name. Call him by that name. God damn it. By the way, Bernard and his men paid a visit to SPDM. I didn't get to talk to them. She turns back to face the window. Thank you for the report. <sighs> she's never been so persistent. Do you know why she's been so different this time, Pedro? Sports field of the SPDM. I didn't realize you had time to invite me to play table tennis. Or are you actually here to lobby, Madam Z? I'll say both, cats. Back then, when I was a student, I'd often invite my classmates to play ping pong after we left the laboratory. A cold shower after getting soaked in sweat is a piece of memory I can't forget. You remind me of the old days in the table tennis varsity. You're the only one I can practice with here. Serve it, Madam C. Let's compete. Madam C backstory? Question mark? No, we're just gonna hop into battle. But why? Nothing happened. Hello? Am I... Am I delusional? Or did nothing happen in that scene? Anyone offer your seat, okay. you senior? Okay, sure. Friendship prevails. Our teammates are not in an ideal condition and thus unable to fight properly. Please watch out for guardian elves. What? Okay. I hear something. Hmm. Let's debuff, buff, and shoot with the gun. Unless this elf is gonna do everything for us. Is this the friendship is magic level? It is. It truly is the friendship is magic level. So we're just gonna watch this thing, uh... Are we supposed to heal it? I think we're supposed to heal it. We can't heal it. What are we supposed to do? We can't. <laughs> Man. 
depression. Probably should have attacked though, so, but it's fine. This guy is solo. He's soloing the verse. Zima healed him a bit. Uh, not much though. I don't think we can do anything. We don't have any disarms, we have nothing. We just, we have nothing. Well, what can we do other than flip cards? Yep. Yep, I'm... Mm -hmm. not good. Unless they take reality damage, which does not seem to be the case. It does not seem to be the case whatsoever. What can we do? We can randomize the cards, try to use Zima's thing, except we're not getting it. There we go. There it is. I guess we can try shooting with our gun and maybe heal him with 1 HP. Yep. One damage. Damn. Another one damage. Oh. They said it could not be done. Okay. We're still soloing the verse with this one. Uh, we can... We can debuff him I hear something. and do this. <laughs> Man, we're just gonna sit here and watch this, really? Hey, he's getting close. I'm surprised Zima alone can can heal this guy enough. I mean, maybe it's uh, what you call it. Maybe it's. Does he do reality damage? I don't know. I don't. It doesn't say anything. So maybe Corn Bloom's debuff is actually doing something. You know. Who knows? So loud. Flick, flick, and Don't call it a day. Serious. Boom! Solo the verse. <laughs> what a, what a fight! What a fight! Stay so difficult. Profile. I don't want to be shunted to some radical department. Mm-hmm. Kiat. That's some design <laughs> right there. Backhand chop. Great, great. She nimbly picks up the white ball and bows. Again. Ready to go. Hey. <laughs> nice shot. Madam Z strikes the little ball, flies over the net in an extremely low parabola, and goes into an unguarded corner of the table. Katz turns her body to one side, striking the ball back confidently. <laughs> We're planning to revise some articles in the draft. <laughs> Which articles? The article is about strengthening the control of registered arcanists. You're right. We do need to improve the credibility of the Foundation in the outside world. <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> the timekeeper's power to discipline should be transferred back to the School of Discipline and the Foundation. The Foundation will conduct a unified risk assessment on Arcanist to ensure this team is always under control. Isn't this what they did with Jessica? Hello? <laughs> but in fact, it still belongs to the timekeeper, right? That is our minimum requirement. And you will not change. Yeah, I, I think that's what happened with Jessica. <laughs> I didn't expect you to compromise. It's not a compromise. It's a reasonable amendment to the draft. Transferring the power of education and discipline to the foundation will help lower the budget and reduce the pressure on Burton. And you would even lobby an opponent, me, for this amendment. A reasonable appeal shouldn't be rejected just because it is raised by a different faction. The foundation needs solidarity, not contradiction. If the draft is meant to pass, I will do whatever I can to make it meet most expectations. Just like this ping pong game. Friendship first, competition second. Legislation shall serve the people. Yet! Hardest quotes ever. You have my vote, Madam Z. <laughs> she went hard with that one. <laughs> A vote is now the only thing I need, Katz. To be continued. Aw, oh, man. <laughs> I see where the risk keeper got his powers from. Or where she got her powers from. Hey, you. Yes, you. Ping where were you? Pong. Ping pong. Ping pong. Ping pong. Ping pong. An imitation show, ping. huh? Yes, an imitation show. 
A ball imitation show, little thing. My dude, where were you? You said you'd introduce yourself. So far, we don't know your name, and you haven't appeared in main story. I swear to God, if he appeared in main story and we just missed it, I, I would lose it. I would genuinely lose it. But what if this guy is just a hallucination in our mind, huh? What if this guy is actually the final boss? What if this guy is actually the final villain? Screw Arcana. We could defeat Arcana, and as is usual with the gacha games, you know, just the bigger villain appears, and it's this guy. Yo, I'm the Arcanist in your mind, and I... I am your mother. No, no, I mean I am your son. No, no, I mean I am the father and you are the mother. No, no, I mean, you know that one Darth Vader meme? Yeah. You're imitating the Messiah while I'm imitating an orange ball made of plastic. <laughs> Hey, hey, you're not supposed to. Uh, we live in a simulation, ladies and gentlemen. We live in a simulation. Being pushed back and forth by two rackets. I have nowhere else to go. Once they apply a force on me, I can't help bouncing to the sky. You can see how the air flows across my dry, wrinkled skin. <laughs> my name is Palpatine. Oh, what a coincidence. Aren't you in the same situation as mine now? Nah, I am sitting comfortably. You? Ha! Look at your frowning face. Your face wrinkles from the eyebrows to the nose tip. But people can barely see those light furrows. We know what that means. You have a poker face, and it's never your fault. But for now, your face is not the thing that matters. Well, maybe for someone it is. But still, it's not. You know what really matters? The game. Yes, it's the game. Of course the game matters. Everyone loves the game. They gather at the stadium yelling or roaring vehemently. They choose one team to become its fan and spend good money on a team uniform or an autographed ball. Yet, it's just a ball. You see where I'm coming from? No, no, no. I mean, on one end I do. Just because, you know, the ball is autographed doesn't make it better. Just because one pitcher threw a ball to the audience and the audience caught it doesn't make it, you know, worth a hundred thousand. But, uh, if that's what you meant, I absolutely see it. Just a ball. Its outline, a circle, could be found in any geometry textbook and anywhere in this world. Yeah, that, that's what a circle is. When the first hominid picked up a coconut and threw it to the sky, and caught it, and threw it, and caught it, and threw it again. When she felt joy and yelped, had she ever thought of the future? Oh my guy, are you having a stroke? Yes, balls change people. In fact, I know balls that know how to produce children, so you better be careful. When it comes to balls, I'm the expert. No, I am not gay, no homo. The future where a simple ball has become so complicated and enchanting. Now we call it the present. Because it's a gift, that's why it is called the present. Get your master Ugwe shit out of here. Unless he's gonna reference like a Matilda crystal ball that tells you the future. God damn it. <laughs> Yes, sure. Complicated and enchanting. Use your silly and smart head to think about this ball game carefully. I'd rather not. That's gay. The complex scoring rules. The harsh requirements for reactive agility. The countless possible foul points. Your fingers, your wrists and arms. A correct way of using them will lead to victory. Mm -hmm. What matters more is, like every ball game, it focuses on how you serve the ball and hit it back. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, my lawyers have told me to remain silent on this one. It's not an easy job as it sounds. When you are in the game, you need to concentrate. Where will the ball come from and how will you return it to your opponent? You need to figure that out within half a second. 
Yeah, I'm sure you're tell you're you're giving me hints. You're giving me advice because that's what happened to you when I put these balls in your mouth. Use your power in a proper way. Move your feet in a stable pace. Inhale and exhale at the right timings. Ping pong, ping pong, ping pong, ping pong. My guy, you're going for way longer than you should be. The sound will last forever and ever until that bouncing little thing falls to either side of the court. Uh huh. That's complete. That is one sad ball, by the way. Trial. Fair play. A few clerks stop and watch by the table. The game is about to start. Pick up the racket. Special training ground. We're just gonna enter a battle. Okay. I don't care. Uh, let's try to finish this as soon as possible because it doesn't look like an important battle. Boom. Boom. Actually. Boom. 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 We're just gonna AoE our way into victory. Mm-hmm. Nasty buff. Of course, we hit the two earth. Or two grass, I guess. And now we have terror debuff. What does that do? Uh, don't be so hard. Terror debuff. And around ends minus one moxie. Like, wow, we care about that. Easy. Except they have defense buff now. They Why? It's called common sense. Mm -hmm. Flying handbag for only three thousand paper dantes. That's a crit. All right, and that's done just like that. I wonder in a speed run, can you actually do these levels or are they going to be too difficult? Are you going to be inside one as you do these levels? I really genuinely wonder if a reverse 1999 speed run is possible. I genuinely do wonder. Pride goes before the fall. I've been there. You better take it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Eternity. I will take it. You received admiration and applause. Yes, I, rever I read that in the reverse order. Come on, dude. It's reverse 1999 for a reason. Echoes in the dark. A sentence falls down into a cave and breaks into countless words. Days later, the usual. Constantine. Palpatine, you mean. Constantine, I mean, my bad. Palpatine, sitting on behind the restroom, looks up. She takes off her reading glasses and closes the book in her hand. Has the voting started? You see, here is the number of votes I have estimated. The pro drafts will lose by five votes to their opponent. Don't forget our bet. The one who loses will pay for the new stamps. The final vote is not today, I'm afraid. She has a complicated look on her See, face. speech is still ongoing. She's just started the part on Article 3, Section 5 of the Rules of Procedure. But the speech has already lasted seven hours. Even some delegates have left. Uh, what? She smiles, surprised. A filibuster? Yes, and Katz's speech will be right after that. So, I guess the final vote won't start until tomorrow. Nice reading expression. That won't make a difference. Delaying the vote won't change the result. Constantine sighs, even though she's shaking her head on screen. We don't know yet. Now she sighs. Come on, dude. You could have just said, hey, Constantine shakes her head, and then you make her sigh. Oh, come on. Come on, reverse. I didn't expect that she would be trying so hard. But for me, this is not necessarily bad news. The filibuster will only have two outcomes. It is either one of the parties wins over two-thirds of support and gains victory, or both parties get stuck in a tug-of-war. If this tug-of-war doesn't end with a clear outcome, the Storm Reformation will end up completely dead and forbidden to be discussed within five years. Are the stakes getting too high? Someone trots over from the doorway. As he comes up to them, he bends over so that only Constantine can hear him. Madam Vice President? Mr. President came back from the Pax House. I will go see him now. He's waiting for you in the office. The big man himself. It has been over a year since they last met. Uh, you know, suddenly I feel like we're in Monstrum. What happened? Constantine quickly trots along the hallway. The window is clear enough to give reflections. She stops and fixes her collar. The door is left half open. 
Mr. President. Joe Biden? Good day to you, sir. May the peace be with us. May the peace be with us. Are you feeling better these days? I can still hang in for a few years. Thank you. Are they doing all right? Just as usual. Nothing to worry about. He gives Constantine a small wave in the shadow. She walks up to him. I'll stay in the Foundation these months. The agenda is well arranged. There is something more important that I must tell you in person. Constantine nods and bends over to listen. That man, the shadow of the president casts on her. The rusty feeble words are difficult to catch, but the meaning of every word makes her wide makes her eyes wide and open out of chalk. I don't know how to read, sorry. Constantine breathes heavily. This is their judgment. No, this is their victory. <laughs> this is a time. This is not the time for an Epic 7 reference. I'm probably spoiling a very important scene right now. Yes. Then I have no objection to it. She slowly resumes standing, then retreats for a few steps and almost falls on the floor. Hold tight, my friend. She supports herself by the file cabinet. Uh, excuse me. I have to admit I was surprised. Thank you for telling me this. It's never a good day when Constantine smiles. So, he's back, by the way. Anyways, I have to ask, uh, what's up with the time skips? This was September 18th. This is September 20th. And now we're in September 26th. And now we're going to September 30th. Come on, dude. Look at where you are. Paulina also once stood here. What the hell is man talking about? A human, a member of the St. Pavlov Foundation. Oh, who would have guessed? She started from here, took 33 steps and a half, turned left, opened the door, and then turned right, went on for another five meters. She stopped and opened the historical intelligence cabinet. Why was she there? For work, sweetheart. Most of the actions we took in most of the time were for our jobs for the sake of getting one. Mm -hmm. She's a good employee, the kind of person who sincerely wishes to contribute to society. Her dedication to work equally applied to events as big as maintaining peace and matters as trivial as looking through old files. It was the 1931 file or the 1935 one. She hasn't gotten there yet. Then but why there is it? another folder which has caught her attention. On December 28th, 1932, on the wonderful day of the Holy Innocents in Mexico, 13 Arcanist High School students attacked the crowd during the nighttime celebration. Am I assuming that's us? I don't think that's us. They claimed the oracle had uttered to them from the inside of a gigantic Cordia Elianoides that they had to shoulder the responsibility to protect the people. That is some Manus Vindicte stuff. So they took their wands and knives, carried bottles of potion of concocted picric acid and nitrocellulose, and walked into the festival market like any regular happy young people. Their attack led to 17 deaths. Six were injured, among which four were disabled for life. Yeah, I don't think that's us. One young girl among the attackers couldn't physiologically stop her hysterical laughter, even when she was under arrest. She quivered convulsively, with her hands twitching tightly on 31 centimeter long pruning shears. She kept muttering the word Bacoti, which is the common way to call the Cordia Ilianoides among the lumber dealers. In the Aztec civilization, it means giant mouth. Any mouth can talk. In this case of mass hysteria, this was the one true rule. Hysteria, madness, paranoia, hearing voices or seeing things. These abnormalities are the sparks flying in the air, and arcanists are like dry cotton. The encounter of the two will cause a fire. Uh-huh. You think yourself a poet? Paulina complained quietly. 
she accused the danger of fire, the risk of heat. One can hardly hold no grudges against the flame when it is hidden next to you patiently, waiting. She started to mutter something of a more extreme nature. She was carried away, forgot that each individual has their own right even in a collective body. She forgot what public opinion can do to subtly influence a community. Her eyes were fixed on the scarlet flame. Racist thoughts crept silently into her blonde-haired, beautiful head like a cunning centipede. Hey, that's that's my girl. She plays League of Legends. Hell yeah. Welcome. Welcome, my girl. Oh, so, who's your main? Oh, you main vein top. Get the hell out of here. Fortunately, this is not yet the end of the story. Paulina still had her chances to change. Ah, so not only is she racist, but she's worse. <laughs> she's also homophobic. Change. Yes. An alteration. Everybody has to change. Hey, listen, man. You may change, but some things remain the same. Otherwise, it's replaced. Now I'm the poet. Whew. You can improve your living standards, pay for prettier white clothes, drive around in a limo painted in bright pink. Anything to prove that you are as much of a man as those tough warriors in ancient Europe. Or you can try the bitter side of life. A life so bad that every weekend you have nowhere to go but lie on a couch hollowed out by your dog and pick your nose. You pick it hard, just to locate and take out the hardest, largest booger that irritates your nasal membranes to stop the endless sneezing. A certain country came to mind, but I'm not gonna say it. The change of Paulina started from a question. A senior staff of the Foundation walked to her, flipping through the pages of the same folder and asked, But Paulina... How are you going to deal with the fire? Probably Madame Z. On the next page, the survivors started a new life under the supportive measures, and the crazy children have left their poor family, leaving the violence and harassment behind, and moved into a sanatorium with white walls. So, the Foundation. The record of the follow-up visits showed that they have stayed mentally stable since. They learned to calm themselves, and overcame drug addiction and alcohol abuse. Some of them were even married. Between the last two pages, there lies a thank you letter. The name signed at the end of the letter went on for two lines, and the last name ends with a cheerful strike going up, like a smiley face. The fire is always there, Paulina. We need to find a way to live with it, not to extinguish it. Keep them somewhere safe, like a high shelf, and away from the fuel. Watch over the temperature. Maybe teach them to burn in a manner that no one, including themselves, would be hurt. Division and confrontation have never taken this world to a better place, have they? They went on talking for a bit more. About the responsibilities of this job. About personal liabilities. About hatred. About the minorities. About the practices that ought to be taken to realize ideas. Young Paulina had changed. Drops of tears seep out from the bottom of that pair of beautiful green eyes. I shed tears with her, of course. Sadly, I was busy sucking the flavoring powder on chips off my fingers and missed the right moment to wipe those tears off my face. Oh, I bet you were. Nevertheless, this is my favorite episode. We should watch it again. <clears throat> Look at where you are. Paulina also once stood here. Complete. That's weird. The... I'm a little confused, but I'll pretend that this is lore accurate. Or <laughs> lore relevant. Trust me, my reader. Telling you she's racist is relevant to the plot. <laughs> Oh boy, so reassuring that the next chapter's name is Road of a Puppy. Anyways, that's it uh, for today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye. There are numerous injustices in the world. 
The law cannot prevail over power. But there shall eventually be a sword sharp enough to cut it down. 